So Pete, what I was saying was, uh, you know, you're one of a handful of people that have won a sanction event. So you've got your ticket to the game. You punched it early the season and you got it in South. Yeah. How was that? Yep. How was South fit or yeah. what was it like to win a sanction? Well, I, um, I think, I think first off, I want to know how the event was. Cause I wasn't there. The event was cool. It was really cool. Um, I, I didn't know, I didn't really know what to expect going down there. I've competed at regionals a handful of times as an individual. And, uh, I was at the East Regional, um, just being up, up here in Ottawa and, you know, North East Canada. And, uh, so, I mean, I guess in the back of my mind, I hope that it would be like a regional event. Um, you know, just the fact that they're qualifying game people to the CrossFit games, you know, that's what you'd expect in terms of the quality of the event. And it turned out to be, in my opinion, you know, pretty bang on. I mean, there was certain aspects of it that I had never, never experienced before. Like the, the whole fact that everything had to be explained in Spanish and English was the first for me, you know, so just that experience was a lot different, but, um, the programming was amazing. They partnered up with Ham Plan, which is run by uh, James Hobart, uh, Spencer Hendel, and also Maliolo up in Boston. Uh, you know, veteran games athletes and guys who have been on seminar staff for a long time. So they know what they're doing, and uh, and they put together some really awesome workouts, well balanced. And um, and some of the staff that actually run Southfit uh, have been involved with CrossFit for a long time, and some and some of them are. Or have been in the past, been on on uh, CrossFit seminar staff, and just have, you know, had their foot in in that door in terms of you know how to run a good event, and they've seen regionals in the past, and um, you know, I always talk about this with uh, with my business partner Paul. We we say you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In terms of running the events, try not to reinvent the wheel. You know, if you're going to run a, a good solid event, just look to what CrossFit's done in the past and try and you know, get as close to that as possible. And I think they did a great job. It was really good. It was well run. I was very happy with it. Yeah. So your win down there is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that this is your first individual appearance at the games, right? My first one. Yeah. That's amazing, man. That, and you had, and I, I think one of the things that I really like about this is, is the fact that you have to win to get your way into, into these events. So it, it puts a lot of pressure on the people who are competing. Like what was it like to actually, you know, punch your ticket by, by claiming a first place? It was crazy, man. I, I haven't won an individual competition since my first individual competition. That was just like a local one, you know, that was, you know, a couple hours away from this city. Like I had done that one. Uh, my first regionals was 2014 on a team. And, uh, and then I was like, oh, I really like this competing thing. I think I'll try an indie comp. You know, I did that one. I won it. And then from there, it was just, you know, compete at regionals and do a couple looks here and there, but never won anything. And then, you know, the way that things stacked up, and it, I mean, we planned to go to this competition and, and obviously the goal was to win. Like, I'm, you know, I wasn't going to go all the way down to Argentina and, and try to not win, right? And, uh, I mean, it was pretty surreal. It was pretty surreal standing on top of the podium at the end. It was, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy. So talk yeah. to me a little bit about that travel, because, uh, that's probably like the furthest North South distance you could, you could travel uh, across the world. I'd say, I mean, if, it, if it's not there, it's pretty close. It's, oh, oh man. So, to, I mean, total travel time was like, you know, around 20 hours 22 hours um and i just plan i mean the nice thing about it is that argentina is pretty well straight south from from where i am right here so the time difference isn't huge um in terms of like recovering from the actual flight i just made sure that i got there a few days early that's all you know um i'm i'm also used to i travel on the weekends like i'm myself i'm on i'm on uh, crossfit seminar staff so i travel quite frequently i'm on planes all the time and so you know you kind of figure out what works best for you in terms of your travel routine and you know how to uh how to manage recovery being on and off flights i've never been on a flight this long so that was a little bit new to me um but you know you still you figure it out you 
it's a big plane. So you get up, you walk around a little bit, you do some stretching here and there and, you know, and then boom, once you're, once you're at the venue and you're, you're in game mode, you pretty much stop thinking about the 22 hour flight and it's in the past. You know? So, um, your, your individual qualification to the games, your, your v- rookie year competing in the CrossFit games, uh, it's been a long time coming. You said you've been competing, you know, your team in regionals in 2014, you've been at it for a minute now. Uh, what yeah. do you think is, is the, you know, like what was the turning point? Is it, is it having more access to events like the sanctionals? Is it the, the, is there a difference in the people that you're competing with? You know, could you, could you see yourself sort of picking out one or two things that, that were the, the changes that, that kind of led to this moment or what? You know, it's funny, man. There's, there was, there's no turning point. Like there was no, I've been, I've had a lot of time to think about it and think about people asking, you know, a similar question often. And, uh, there was no real turning point. It's just been a lot of consistency for a long time. And, you know, I mean, when you think of what it means to train CrossFit and what, and you look at past athletes who have excelled in the sport, they'll all tell you the same thing. It's just a lot of hard work. Uh, it's putting one foot in front of the other, grinding on your weaknesses and, and, you know, staying healthy and staying motivated. And I think throughout the years, I've done a good job of those things. It's pretty simple. Like my goal has always been to compete at the highest level. So as soon as I made regionals as a team, I wanted to compete as an individual. As soon as I as an individual and, and, you know, ever since 2015, when I made my first regional appearance as an individual, uh, at the East regional, you know, my goal was to try and make the gains and that goal has never really changed. And, uh, you just, you know, obviously you've got ups and downs, but you take it in stride. And as long as I think just my focus and determination over a long period of time has just finally paid off, you know, um, I mean, going down, some people might say that, you know, a sanctioned event is, is different than regionals. It is different. You know, but you still have to go there and win the thing. Um, you got to go out there and you got to perform. And there's a lot of good competitors out there. So, um, I mean, it, on the weekend, it's got to add up for you, and you and you need to you got to have little things add up, like you know, good calls for you, bad calls for other guys, or vice versa. And you gotta you gotta be you know in the zone in that moment to make the win happen. Um, but that goes for you know, that goes for any sport, really, right? If you're going to win a championship in anything, um, a lot of things need to add up for you. And I think it was just, you know, it was a combination of that and just the consistency that I've that I've put in over the past, like, seven to eight years, you know? So with the, um, you know, with the changes to the game season came a lot of changes to, you know, CrossFit as a whole, and yeah. you mentioned that you're on the seminar staff. Mm-hmm. Um, what, you know, what's been kind of the vibe amongst you and your peers on that, on that seminar staff with so many of the, the changes sort of maybe leaving you guys in the dark about what's going on. I know we're kind of shifting topics here away from the games, yeah. but I'm just curious about your take on this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm either, I guess in the dark in a sense about certain things, uh, um, like very early on, we started to see that giant shift. Uh, but you know, we uh, we're lucky enough to be on a staff that are we're supported by a lot lot of individual experience. You know, both in the sport and being on seminar staff as trainers, people who have been on seminar staff for you know twenty years, or you know, like from the very beginning, are still training and are still coaching on staff and you know these individuals are you know our mentors for all of us who are a little bit newer and um it becomes very easy to 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 stay calm and and to you know just sort of trust the process when you talk to these individuals and they're not phased by anything because they've already seen so many changes come about in CrossFit in the CrossFit world throughout all the years. You know, I think it's, it's easy to, it's easy to get stressed out about those changes. If you're a little bit newer uh, to the CrossFit world, or if you're, you know, a new member on staff and you, you know, you, you're like, Oh my God, 
it was one way and now it's another. But these individuals who have been on it for so long, they see the change happen five times. And and, um, and to them, every progression is for the right reason. And it's always in the best interest of the company. So I actually really like that, that you, you've, you're kind of painting a picture here that I really like this, this, this sort of like very committed, very consistent, you know, patient, even keel type, you know, professional at what you do, whether it's coaching or, you know, training, competing. And I'm curious, where did that come from? Were you always like this? Did you develop this over time? Were you like a hot headed hockey player or something at some point? I, I don't know. <laughs> I did play hockey. I did play hockey. I don't know. I definitely wasn't hot headed. Won't me as, as a, a pretty calm individual. Um, and you know, maybe that maybe it's just my personality. That I, I'm a very patient person, and I and I, you know, if there's something that I want, I know that I've got the determination to get there. I just need to, you know, again take those small steps and, and move in the right direction. I mean, all in all the things that I've done in my life, I've never been the most gifted at it, whether it's, you know, school or sports or hockey, you know, I've always had to work at it. And, you know, in any of those things, I, I feel like I've been able to excel at them to the degree that, that, uh, or to the goals that I've set for myself. Um, and it's always just been through hard work. So I think, you know, when you do that enough and you have that repetition of, if I want a goal, I need to work for it and it might take some time. Um, then it's easy to see a pattern. And then in future goals that you set for yourself, it's, it but just becomes easier through experience not to give up on them and to just continue pushing forward, you know? Um, sort of having like a key, even keel mindset about it and not being thrown off when you have little setbacks and stuff like that. Um, that, that could be it. That could be it. Just an accumulation of, of patience over the years, you know? So talk to me a little bit now. Let's let's look forward to, to 2020. You've got the games in, you know, seven, eight months or so, seven and a half months. Um, how are you going to use this time? Because, you know, this is only the second time yeah. that we've had an opportunity for people to qualify this far away from the CrossFit Games. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy and awesome all at the same time. Um, I'm lucky enough to uh I'm, I'm lucky enough to be expecting my first child in a, in like a week basically any day now i'm gonna have uh, my wife's gonna give birth so the fact that i qualified already for the games is a huge weight off my shoulders <laughs> and uh and so you know the next month is gonna be just trying to figure out that dad life a little, a little bit you know, trying to figure out how to take care of the baby and a few sleepless nights, I think, at the very least. Um, and then and then after that, it's just going to be a slow chug, you know, start to start to get back into a training routine come, you know, February, um, you know, March. Uh, uh, I've got a couple sanctioned events during the year already lined up again. I'm going to go to the Atlas Games in Montreal in, in March. And then in July, I'm going to go to Asbury Park in uh, in New Jersey which will be really fun. Um, and I just use those as some benchmarks and just try to try to measure myself there. But again, not, not put all my cards into the, into uh, all my cards on the table, so to speak with those competitions and just continue to focus on, on trying to peak for, for the CrossFit games. Luckily I've got a great coach. My business partner, Reza Mashkuri is kind of the mastermind behind our, our, we, uh, our program, we call it the NCR program, obviously named after our gym. And he um, he programs my extra work beyond just the class workouts uh, that I do on a daily basis. And uh, and I pretty much leave it to him to run me into the ground and uh, program stuff that I would just hate to program for myself. So that's basically the plan is just uh, close my eyes and see what Reza programs tomorrow. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's I, I yeah. you know, I love the re the approach. It's very refreshing. The kind of just do the work, do the thing, like day in and day out and and you know, trust the process is it's something that a lot of people talk about. It's not something that a lot of people execute. Yeah, and I that's one thing I don't understand is like I do hear so many people talk about it and 
you know, I would be the first to say they're the ones who I learned this from. But you're right, is you don't see a lot of people executing on that. I don't know if it's because they they get frustrated with themselves or they or maybe they do have some impatience that you know they need to work on just being being patient and, and waiting out the process. That's one thing too is you know having Reza as my coach, he's my business partner. We've we've been we've had this gym open, CrossFit NCR for you know seven years now. We're in our eighth year. And um I've been with him competing alongside him since day one, since 2014 when we first ran to regionals. And so he knows me really, really well as an athlete. And, you know, I wouldn't trust anybody else, uh, not even myself, obviously, with programming the things that I need to do to get better. Um, I think another thing that athletes can really do to benefit themselves is if they're looking for a coach, like look for the coaches that know you best, right? Don't try and go out and, you know, pay a coach who lives halfway across the country who knows nothing about you. Yeah, they'll give you some cool workouts. They might by chance hit some stuff that, um, you know, give you a workout or two that it's really challenging. I mean, anyone can make a hard workout, but if it's the right one for you, that's a different question, right? And when you're trying to get that extra percent or 2% to try and compete at the games, a couple tweaks here and there make all the difference. So, you know, I, tr I trust Reza and I trust the NCR program with, uh, with everything. And that's exactly what I do. And, and that's what I plan on doing is just putting my head down, you know, closing my eyes and just, you know, grinding out the, the days with whatever is in front of me. That's awesome, man. I love that sentiment. Uh, and I think that's yeah. a really important thing for people to, to wrap their brains around because this, this, this is not a fast game this is not a thing that happens overnight i mean it takes hours and hours and hours of work no it takes months yeah. and years of work uh just you know like you said grinding grinding through it to see yeah. the results that people are, are hoping for so that, that's very cool to hear i'm, I'm happy to hear that, that you have that mindset and you can share that with everyone thanks man yeah so uh you know i, I guess with the 2020 crossfit games you know not not really anywhere around the corner you know, you've got a couple sanctionals coming up. Yeah, you've got uh, you've got plenty yeah. of time. You got a baby coming up, so that's its own yeah. little mini adventure. The uh, you know the exactly the uh, the fact that you can you have a support system that you can rely on with with your coach and and uh, I think Paul's out there, right? The Trombley is also an NCR, so you've got a little dad. Yeah, yeah, so, yep, right there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, Paul's my business partner. So obviously, you know, I've learned a lot from him and will continue to do so once, uh, once we have this kid, cause he's actually expecting his third a week after mine comes. That's amazing. So, you know, the NCR family is growing, so to speak. I, I feel like every time I see one of Paul's kids on, on his Instagram, they're always like crying while he's working out. They're just not excited to watch. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> well now i think i think they're maturing now if you look if you look lately all they're doing is burpees oh nice so they're, they're starting to yeah they're yeah starting to drink the Kool -Aid. To, that's right they're, they're joining in now <laughs> that's awesome yeah well, exactly yeah thanks for having me man thank you uh thank you again congratulations again happy new year again and congratulations mainly on the baby honestly the crossfit yeah. games thing is cool but the baby is way cooler yeah, exactly. Cross is very, very secondary to what's about to happen to me. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for the CrossFit Games, but man, being a dad's going to be nuts. I can't wait. That's awesome, dude. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Armin.